everybody, this is Juanito Pascual. I'm super excited to uh, do this rumba video tutorial today, partly because I, um, I think rumba is probably one of the most accessible elements of all of flamenco. I think of it as sort of a, a gateway uh, into flamenco, a, a great way to start playing, especially if you already play maybe another style of guitar. Rumba is one of the styles of flamenco that's easiest to access if you already have some guitar background and it also is a great um, it's a great style a great um, rhythm to basically be able to start interacting with other musicians within flamenco other guitarists in the form of you know maybe rhythm and lead guitar or rhythm and, and, and other instruments playing melodic parts um, certainly percussion and guitar in other words, it's a great it's a great uh, style to be able to interact and participate in flamenco if you are relatively new to the genre. It's also something you'll hear used in a lot of different um, settings. Like even this strum pattern, in other words, is pretty similar to some other styles. And one of the main reasons is it's a four-four style a four beat rhythmic cycle unlike a lot of flamenco which is in threes and sixes or twelves so the strumming style um, isn't that different than things you'll hear oftentimes in a lot of uh, popular music settings and the other thing is um, this particular video I'm excited to just illustrate a few different ways of the very many ways you can play the rumba there's uh, lots and lots of variations and, and one of the one of the simple things that's true about flam uh, rumba is that even within the same basic strumming pattern, different people may use slightly different fingerings, or um, you may yourself alternate within the same pattern. Sometimes you're going to use a thumb for a downstroke. Sometimes you might use an index finger for a downstroke. Anyway, in this video, I want to outline a few basic ways of playing three pretty common and very useful. Um, variations on the rumba rhythm and I hope you find it useful and by all means leave comments and I look forward to to hearing from you and doing some more of this in the future extremely slowly now so um, I think of it as I break it into two parts the first half which um, I'm gonna start it's down with the fingers up with the thumb down with the fingers again, up with the thumb again, and then that's the first half, and then it's in the middle you have a mute, so that's going to be down, up, down, up, mute. That fourth stroke, by the way, which is the second upstroke, is an accent, so it's down, up, down, up, mute, and then with the index finger, up, down, up. So once again, the first half is going to be down, up, down, up, mute, then up, down, up. And notice in that last sequence of three, the middle one, the downstroke, is accented. So you have these two big accents all the time. Down, up, down, up, mute, up, down, up. So it's that second upstroke and the last downstroke. Those are the big accents. One and two and three and four and one and two and and four. So as you can see, those accents are on the, the and after two and on beat four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So um, one comment I want to make is that the fingers we use uh, can vary. A common variation is to use the thumb down on beat one. One, and so you're going to do down, up with the thumb. One, and two, and, and four, and one, and two. Sometimes, if, this is good if you're a little bit more experienced player, sometimes you can also do that down with a golpe, like this. So those are, um, that's that sort of most standard 
form of rumba that you'll hear and see people doing. One thing I want to add to that is, again, for beat four, that accent. So we have one and two and. And so we're going to do this beat four. A lot of times you can do it with a palm mute. So, so the way I like to practice that, so let me show you one time through the one measure so you can hear it in context. What I like to do there is think of the movement of the palm hitting the side of the palm, hitting the strings, and the downstroke with the index finger as a single motion. So I don't try to time the palm and the finger, I try to just think of it as I'll put the finger, get the index finger ready to strum, and then at the same time just kind of throw, I think of it as sort of throwing the hand down towards the ground. So that movement brings the palm to the strings and it also like hurls the finger and through the air. So that's something of course also a sound effect you can use in other situations but it's it gives a nice rhythmic chop. You can do it without that but it's a lot it gives it a lot more of a, a, a little rhythmic kick when you do that. So, and then, again, a little technical side note, when you're doing that chop, the upstroke is something that you can think of as just being an, in a natural flow. So instead of stopping, freezing, and then trying to do an upstroke, of sort of relaxing this part actually and sort of let the, the whole hand just kind of I'm exaggerating the amount of movement in the end you don't want to be necessarily moving all that much but to show you how the flow can happen so you could even practice just that the down and once you get comfortable with that just down up So, to develop the ease and the fluidity. So once again, I'm going to do it uh, nice and slow now. First with no chord. That's kind of the basic pattern. A nice variation is this two beat sequence, which is just uh, tap, up, down, up. So you can do it with your index down or all four fingers or sort of three of these fingers heading down. There's different ways you can do it. If you get for more power, you can do thumb up as well at the end. So that's just one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two. And one. That can be added um, sometimes as a contrast just to create some variety and you might you see people go like <laughs> do the taps. I wanted to show a third variation which is similar, it's uh, quite similar to the first version but it has uh, an important difference which is that we accent the last beat or the last sound of the measure which is the and after four so and it gives us a syncopation which is one and two and three. And when we do 
that, I'll explain the pattern in a second, but when we do that, it's important to notice we're not, we're not playing one of the next measure. So it gives us, it's an, it's an anticipation of the one that we're hitting, the and, a four, and then leave beat one actually silent and pick it up after and two. So that looks the same. The first several, everything is the same until the last three beats, the last three movements, I should say, of the measure. And so we have down, up, down, up, you, up, down, up. So in that case, we're not doing the beat four with the mute, we're doing up, down. A lot of times the way I'll, I'll do that is uh, four and, so I'm doing beat four with fingers down, like, so it's kind of like a, a like you're holding like a, a little ball in your hand, so like a rounded fingers and thumb like this. So, one and two. Again, I'm going to do it very slowly, and I'm going to count it so you can see what's happening. So it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So that's what that is. It's down, up, down, up, mute, up, down, up. So the difference is you just accent the very last one instead of the second to last one, which is what we did in the original pattern. We accented the beat four going down with that palm mute. Here we're accenting the and after four. So I'm going to just play around a little bit, just play right now, so you can see freely mixing the two patterns. And maybe I'll throw in the, uh, the middle one as well in a, in a certain spot. Here we go. See you on some future videos coming up soon. Thanks a lot.